Hey, I'm Jaded, and welcome to the third episode of What I Learned in Korean School is... Lexi! <laughs> in this episode, I'm going to be focusing a lot on vocabulary building. It's really important to start memorizing vocab words early on. Much of language learning is just building vocabulary. So there's a lot of memorization, there's a lot of practice and review and review and review <laughs> over and over. Specifically, we're going to start learning basic nouns. And we'll start making very basic sentences using ida. Oh, and I'm also going to be talking about free resources for learning Korean, specifically the ones that I use. Hana, do, set, shijakaja! All right, so on my Tani Cards page, I have nouns broken up into multiple decks so that learning them won't be too overwhelming. So for this lesson, we're going to start with Korean level one concrete nouns, Korean level one abstract nouns, Korean animals, and Korean level one foods and drinks. I also want to include some of the more simple and common words from this deck. Korean, school, work, government nouns. 이때는 조금 연습해봐요. 단어 문장 글씨 숙제 시험 수업 직업 회사 책 책상 의자 연필 샤프 종이 편지 선물 상자 돈 현금 현금이 없어요 쓰레기 쓰레기 같은 놈 영화 영상 여쇠 자동차 or just 차 자동차 차 거리 건물 벽 바닥 탁자 식탁 탁자 식탁 전화 전화 했었어? 전화번호 주세요. 휴대폰 or 핸드폰 휴대전화 잡지 만화 장난감 가위 거울 주소 값 값이 얼마예요? 예철 가족 친족 미래 과거 거짓말, 사실, 진실, 진심, 진심이야, 인사, 의견, 뜻, 무슨 뜻이에요? 의미, 산책, 부탁, 추억, 기억, 혹시 저 기억나요? 기분, 기분이 어때? 감정, 소문, 서식, 연습, 복습, 소개팅, 취미, 실수, 잘못, 동물, 딱, 오리, 양, 사슴, 물고기. Sengsong is used for fish that are thought of as food. Sengsong, you would eat. 물고기. You would not eat. Kobuki. Kekuri. Gongchung. Puongi. Nukte. Yo. Kokiri. Onsungi. Noguri. Gosum dochi. Banchan. Achim. Jomshim. Jonyok. Hansik. 양식, 식사, 볶음밥, 계란, 달걀, 두꺼운 물, 찬물, 얼음, 커피, 음료수, 야채, 과일, 딸기, 접시, 젓가락, 숟가락, 수저, 소금, 후추, 소탕, 김치찌개, 삼겹살, 족발, 
For any of the words that I didn't say and you want to hear the pronunciation, you can copy and paste it from the tiny card deck into Google Translate and click the speaker icon. In Korean, a sentence will always end in either a verb, an adjective, or ida, or its opposite, anida. So let's talk about ida first. Ida is unique because it's conjugated differently from verbs and adjectives, and it's also attached to the end of nouns. Ida means to be. For instance, I am a student. The am part would be ida, or this is a tree. The is part would be ida. So ida is used to basically say noun A is noun B, and it's attached to noun B. Let's go back in previous videos and look at sentences that I've given you and I'll show you where the ida is. 다행이다. 너 어디야? 새끼야. Or 개새끼야. 깜짝이야. 너 바보야? 진심이야. Now, if we take these phrases and line them up, you can see some similarities, some patterns. Now, like I've said in a previous episode, the subjects are often omitted because they're implied. So the subject, which would be noun A in orange, usually is omitted. So that's why you don't see it in most of these. So Ida is in the bright green and noun B is in the bluish color. And Ida will always be attached to noun B. Now in Korean, there's levels of formality with speech. I break them up into three categories, casual, polite, and formal. But there's also plain form, or it's called dictionary form or diary form. And that's when you take ida or a verb or an adjective and you don't change it at all. You don't conjugate it at all. It just ida stays ida. And that's what you see with tahengida. Ida is just attached on the end, it doesn't change at all. So that's dictionary form. There's different reasons for using that form when speaking, but one of the reasons is when you're talking to yourself because you're not addressing anyone and you don't have to use any level of politeness because you're not talking to anyone in particular, you're just talking to yourself. For the rest of these phrases, they're conjugated in the casual level of speech, which is called panmar. Polite and formal levels of speech would be called tondetmar. So this is all banmar, very casual, and you would use this when speaking with friends, family, or those that have agreed to speak with you in casual language. So ida and panmar would be conjugated either to ya or iya. But when is ida conjugated into ya and when is it conjugated into iya? If the noun be that it's attached to ends in a vowel, ida is conjugated into ya. If noun b ends in a consonant, ida is conjugated into iya. So seki ends in a vowel, so you would add ya, sekiya, and kamtak ends in a consonant, so you would add iya, kamsakya. Jinsim ends in a consonant, iya, jinsimya. Then these other two over here, the subject is still there. It wasn't omitted. No means you. So it's saying noun A, which is you. Pabo, which is fool. Ida, to be, which translates into are, is, am. So it's you are a fool. But it's a question, so it's asking, are you a fool? No odia. Where are you? This one's a little different. You can only attach ida to odi, which means where, when you're asking where the person you're talking to is, like you're on the phone with them or something. So you can ask, where are you? Or if you're asking where a place is, like the bathroom. Now let's move on to tondet mar, and let's look at some sentences where ida has been conjugated into the polite level of speech. The polite level of speech is probably the one that you would use the most and you would hear the most. It's best just to get used to talking in the polite level of speech rather than getting used to talking in casual speech because you don't want to accidentally speak casually to somebody you should be speaking more politely with because it would be considered offensive. 저는 미국 사람이에요. 이름이 뭐예요? 값이 얼마예요? 
무슨 뜻이에요? All right, so let's line these phrases up and let's take a look at the patterns. Some of them end in ieo and some of them end in yeo. So in the polite level of speech, ida is either conjugated into ieo or yeo. And as with the casual conjugation of ida, conjugating ida into the polite level depends on whether the word that ida attaches to ends in a vowel or a consonant. So with 저는 미국 사람이에요. Saram ends in a consonant, so you would attach ieo. And with 이름이 뭐예요? 모 ends in a vowel, so you would attach yeo. And with 무슨 뜻이에요? 두 ends in a consonant, so you would add ieo. 값이 얼마예요? 얼마 ends in a vowel, so you would add yeo. All right, now let's see a couple of examples where ida is conjugated into the formal level of speech. 저는 선생님입니다. 제 이름이 제레디입니다. This one's pretty easy. You can see that ida has been conjugated in the same way for each of the sentences. 입니다. So for the formal level of speech, ida is always conjugated into 입니다. So to review, ida means to be, and it's used when comparing a noun with another noun, such as saying, I am a student. Ida, as it is, is called the dictionary form or the plain form or diary form. And the conjugated present tense forms of Ida are different depending on the level of speech. Panmar is casual speech. So with Panmar, Ida is conjugated into either Ya, if the noun that it's attached to ends in a vowel, or Ia, if the noun ends in a consonant. For tsondatma, there's polite speech and formal speech. For polite speech, ida is conjugated into yeo if the noun that it's attached to ends in a vowel, or ieo if it ends in a consonant. For the formal level of speech, ida is conjugated into ibnida, regardless of whether the noun ends in a vowel or consonant. Here are some free resources that I'm using to learn Korean. My number one resource that I like to use, as simple as it is, is Google Translate. I really like it because you can speak into the microphone and it can try to guess what you're trying to say at least, so it's a good way to practice pronunciation. Papago is similar to Google Translate, but it breaks down sentences more and can be a little bit more accurate, but it doesn't have the voice-to-text option like Google Translate does. My favorite resource has got to be howtostudykorean.com. It really fits with my learning style. I'm someone who kind of needs to know all the details about how something works, and that's what How to Study Korean does. He really knows how to break things down and explain grammatical concepts in a really logical and thorough way. I also use his site as kind of a dictionary because he has a lot of vocab and definitions and sample sentences. At the end of the lessons, there's practice videos as well, which are extremely helpful. Talk to me in Korean is also a pretty good resource. Unlike how to study Korean, where the lessons can be very long, Talk to Me in Korean has much shorter lessons, and they're much more simplified, but obviously it's not going to be as thorough as how to study Korean. But there are a lot of teachers on Talk to Me in Korean whose first language is Korean, so you can listen to them and learn pronunciation. Talk to Me in Korean seems to focus on getting you to speak Korean as quickly as possible in order to have simple conversations, whereas How to Study Korean really breaks down everything and focuses on building vocabulary and a good solid foundation. Actually, using How to Study Korean and Talk to Me in Korean at the same time, they kind of line up pretty well together. So I would go back and forth. I started with how to study Korean, and then I would switch over to talk to me in Korean, do some lessons there, then go back to how to study Korean, do some more lessons, and I just go back and forth like that. Duolingo is pretty good for memorization when learning new vocabulary words, but for teaching you the concepts, not as much. It's a good way to just go over things that you've learned to keep it fresh in your mind. Memorize is also another resource that's good for that. 
It's a website where people are able to make flashcards on whatever they want, but Memorize has their own Korean language flashcards. You go to courses, Korean, and then you'll see these decks by Memorize. Those are the ones that I'm using. Right now there's only three, but they have tons of content. And what's great about them is that they have videos and audio so you can really hear how things are pronounced and you can even see them saying it in real life situations. So Memorize is really great for review, building vocabulary, and learning pronunciation, and learning how to listen and to really get an ear for spoken Korean. I like to use Wiktionary to look up meanings of words. It'll give the etymology, related words, synonyms, antonyms, conjugations, sentence examples. Also, topic. The topic test tests your proficiency in the Korean language. It has listening and reading sections. They're really difficult. They have mock tests that you can do online. But what I wanted to point out is that they have a list of the 6,000 most common Korean words. So if you want to focus your vocabulary list, you can just use this as a guide and learn the most commonly used words. And of course, Tiny Cards, which is part of Duolingo. I have my own decks that go along with these videos, but it might help you to make your own so that you can tailor your learning experience to you. You can also use it to keep track of vocab you pick up from watching Korean dramas or listening to Korean music. There's been a lot of new vocab up until now, so I'm not going to be adding any more for a while. So I'll leave you with the vocab from this episode and the previous ones and all of these free resources for you to do a lot of studying and reviewing on your own. 그래서 다시 오기 전에 많이 복습해야죠. 나중에 봐요.